Good morning, I'm Art Davidson from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, horticulturist here, and we're going to talk uh, about uh, pollinators and what is a big problem with them right now and what we can do about it. Um, as you know, majority of our crops require some kind of pollination that other than by wind or by vibration. So they require something, honeybee, bumblebee, flies, butterflies, moths, even bats, uh, other animals as well. But majority of them are your uh, things that are bees and wasps and that in that particular family. And they're in a big crisis right now in the United States and around the world, but particularly here, um, we have what's called colony collapse disorder with our honeybees, which is caused by a lot of things. Um, some of it is monoculture, some of it is um, just the way our environment has changed, whether it's too much water or too little water or whatever, too high a temperature, too low a temperature. But by and large, the, the bees, and in particular honeybees, have hit a tipping point now. And um, I believe that tipping point is the use of a systemic insecticide. There are several that are on the market, and I don't want to go into that, and they can be purchased commercially and even at the big box stores. Um, but there's another problem that's kind of a hidden one that a lot of people don't even realize about this. You go to one of the big box stores uh, to buy bedding plants, particularly flowers, and these flowers are also treated with these systemic insecticides. And what's happening is either directly or little by little, which we call synergistically, they're picking up minute amount of these chemicals and it's killing them or it's disabling their hives. And it's a huge, huge problem. And I'm here to tell you that um, if you're gonna go to one of these big box stores or to even a local garden center, you need to ask them what they're using, what they're spraying uh, on their crops to find out whether it's something that you'd be interested in, in purchasing because that is a huge issue. And these chemicals just don't go away. Once they're in the plant, they're in there. They're in the roots, they're in the stems, the leaves, the flowers, flower stems, everything. So it's, it, it's, it's imperative that we minimize their effect on our environment and definitely don't use it. I mean, many people are tempted to use it because they have problems, particularly on fruit trees and so forth. Please don't use these chemicals. They're, they're very, very bad for the environment. Um, one of them, the chemical name is called imidacloprid, and you can look on the labels, and you'll see this funny name, imidacloprid, and the other one is clothiandidin, but mostly that, that um, the first one that I shared with you, imidacloprid is, is a huge culprit in our society today. This uh, plant in front of me is called Korean hyssop, and it is an excellent uh, attractor of pollinators, and if, um, you will see we've got bumblebees on here, honeybees, we've got hoverflies, regular flies, we've got harlequin beetles, uh, I even saw a ladybug on here. It's just, this particular plant just attracts them like a magnet. It's, it's fabulous to, to, to observe uh, what's going on here. Particularly the, the uh, what we call the uh, parasitic and parasitoid wasps, which are so important. Um, to reducing the insect population without using any chemicals. They are very efficient. They usually lay eggs in uh, caterpillars of moths and butterflies. And that is a huge uh, advantage for us. If we allow them to do their job, we don't have to use chemicals whatsoever because the, the damage could be minimal. Particularly if we intercrop, in other words, grow this crop in with other crops that we're growing we can reduce the insect populations down to where they're tolerable. Uh, many people are hung up on the fact that a, a, a crop, beans or tomatoes or whatever, have to look perfect, but that's just not the way it is in nature. We do find holes in leaves and holes in fruit from time to time, but by and large, if we can buy into the fact that maybe plant 20% more of a crop, and then we can, we can, we can put up with the damage and it, it's not so bad, and then get over this idea of this perfect aesthetic look. It's just not reality. We need to focus on the actual beauty. I, I pick flowers sometimes that are not complete. I like them just for the color. It, it doesn't have to be a perfect flower or a perfect vegetable. I can cut off a, a bad spot on a tomato or you know, break off a bad part of a green bean. It's not a big deal. So there's 
something for you to consider. But uh, what we need to do is, is we need to come up with some great ideas to attract these pollinators to our gardens. This is one plant, the Korean hyssop. Anisip hyssop is another. Uh, common dill, garden dill, is wonderful uh, for pollinators. They love those flowers. They're very highly attracted to them, particularly the parasitic and parasitoid wasps. Um, fennel, anything in that, uh, carrots even, the wild carrot we've got growing around here, the, the Queen Anne's lace, fabulous, fabulous attractor to pollinators. So these are things that we need to, to, to consider. Be a great detectives, look around your property, see the vista that you may have. You may have some kind of weeds that are attracting pollinators. Don't take them all out of your garden, leave some of them in there for them to eat on. They need it, it's very important. Another one, like late in, uh, in the fall, um, I'll grow uh, turnip greens and mustard greens and those beautiful yellow flowers. The pollinators go crazy for them. You'll see the honeybees just working them like crazy. Clover, that's another one during the year. Even the ubiquitous white clover, that's, it's, it's not their favorite food, but when there's nothing else to eat, they will work it. They love it. If they have, if they have nothing else, they will just work it to pieces. They, they love it. So work with nature. Try not to work against it. Avoid the use of these uh, systemic insecticides and uh, try to interplant things like this and uh, basil and dill and all these other crops in with your other crops. Some of them are companion plants, are great to have together. So just, I just highly recommend that you do this for your own sake and for the sake of our environment and for future generations. Thank you.